Hello and welcome to the second part of the MCI Media Redundancy Protocol tutorial. In this part, we're going to talk about practical implementation of a ring topology based on Media Redundancy Protocol. It's going to be implemented using TIA Portal version 17, and those are the components. We have a Scalens XB208 dedicated as the MRP manager. Then we have the Simatic CPU 1500 series as a MRP client. And then we have some of the AMCI devices participating in the ring network, such as integrated stepper driver size 34, then size 23, size 17. Then we have integrated server drive. The next one is networked relay board. Then we have the AC stepper driver and finally DC stepper driver. Here I have all of the devices added to the Profinet network. Those steps are the same regardless uh, if you are implementing a uh, ring topology or not. So if you need more information on how to do that, please uh, refer to our uh, uh, tutorial that covers those topics, how to add MCI devices to the Profinet network. And that tutorial is uh, available on our website. So now I'm going to talk only about those uh, settings and configurations that are related to, to the ring topology. So let's start with the uh, Scalance Ethernet switch. I'm going to open the properties. And here, that media redundancy property. You can see over here we have listed four, four uh, MRP instances. So in this particular case, that uh, Scalance uh, switch can handle four independent rings. In this case, in this example, I'm using only one and I'm using only the first one, so all others are inactive. Now we have that MRP domain, it's the MRP domain 1, which means that all other devices later on when we are adding to the, to the ring must belong to that particular domain. Also we have to dedicate the role of this device, so this particular device, the Scalance uh, switch, is going to be manager. That's the only device that's going to play a role of the manager. And also, if you want to get the feedback and monitor status of the ring, you can uh, set these uh, diagnostic interrupt options so that you can get uh, feedback into your CPU. So this is a setting related for the, your uh, Ethernet switch as a master. Now I'm going to open uh, the properties one of the other devices in the ring. So let's say this one for SMD23. Here in the media redundancy property, as I just said before, this uh, device must belong, like all others, to the MRP domain 1 and also must play role of the client. The same purpose of this diagnostic interrupt uh, if you want uh, option, you, if you want that uh, feedback for the diagnostics in your CPU, simply check this option too. And the next thing is the I/O cycle. By default, it's the set to calculate update time automatically. In this uh, particular case, we see that the watchdog time is set to six uh, milliseconds. So we obviously need to change it because we know that the the uh, ring topology requires at least 200 milliseconds because that's the time it requires to change, to detect the fault and change from one uh, topology to another. So we have to do it manually, simply check the manually, and we need to increase the update time to increase the watchdog time be, to be greater than 200 milliseconds. So we can select option uh, 128 milliseconds altogether is going to make 384 milliseconds which is obviously greater than 200 milliseconds and it's more than enough time to give it to the media redundancy protocol. Now you have to go to all of devices and set the same thing. So you have to set all devices to belong to the MRP domain 1 to play a role of the client and increase that the watchdog time to over 200 milliseconds, in this particular case to 384 milliseconds. 
Now we have also to set up the MRP redundancy. Simply go over the Profinet network and click on its uh, properties. So we can see there's the MRP domains, four of them, and as we said, we're going to use only the first one, which is given by default. Then we can see there's the there are nine devices altogether. One is the playing the role of the master, and all others are clients. And we have listed all of devices that belongs. So now we have to just be sure that all of devices listed belongs to that uh, MRP domain one. They're listed in alphabetical order. So first we have we have the Siemens PLC belonging to MRP domain. It plays roles of the client. Then we have that relay board, network relay board, also belongs to the MRP domain one, a playing role as a client. Then we have that Scalance, the first MRP domain, and it's playing a role as a manager. All others are not used, not uh, used in this case. And then we have listed all other devices in the ring. So we have all those uh, AMCI devices, all of them set to belong to the MRP domain one and the playing role as a client. So that part is done. And the last part of the setting, even though it's not uh, mandatory, but it's uh, recommended to go to topology view and then connect all devices to replicate what is the connection on your real hardware. So for example, in this case, I have a Scalance that port two connected to the, let's say port uh, one of the SMD 34, and then port two from here to port one of the SMD 23 and so on and so forth. So simply follow whatever is the uh, real connection in your hardware or will be real connection in your hardware and set it up. The reason is, as I said, it's not mandatory, but it's uh, good to have it later on. You will see in this example, it's much easier to troubleshoot broken ring. So if the ring is broken between any of those two devices, or it's eventually one device failing, you can see right away here in this uh, topology view. And as a last step, we have to download it to the network. So simply go to compile the configuration, download to the network, and then after that we can go online and see performance of the of the ring. So now we are online, so you can see that all devices are connected, there's no issues, they're com communicating, and also from topology view we can see it in more details. The, we can see uh, what port of each device is connecting to what port to the uh, neighboring device. Here I have all the devices connected in the network, in the ring topology. So down there you can see we have that uh, Simatic uh, Siemens CPU, next to it is the Siemens Scalance Ethernet switch, then we have all the other AMCI devices starting with the integrated stepper driver size 34, the next one is size 23, then size 17, this one is the integrated server drive, the next one is the network relay board, then we have the AC stepper driver, and finally DC stepper driver. Here I have a small profile running all the drives, so I have that uh, relative move run running back and forth clockwise and counterclockwise, and also some profile running on the relay board. So as you can see, the ring is closed, there is no issues, uh, all the motion runs smoothly. So now I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break the ring and see what's gonna happen. So I'm disconnecting this cable, and as you can see, all the motion continues to work and profile on the relay board without any problems. And we can still see that the uh, device is, of course, uh, reporting the issue, and then the CPU also has the indication that there's the issue with the ring, but everything still works fine and smooth. We can also take a look in the topology view and see what's going to happen in a moment when I'm disconnecting the uh, cable from the relay board. You see how that reacts, the relay board and the AC uh, stepper drive uh, indicating there's the broken ring between them. So 
This is the reason why it's strongly recommended to set up also the topology view. Obviously now it's much easier to troubleshoot the ring in case that you have a problem within the ring. Now I'm gonna plug back that uh, cable and we'll see what's gonna happen. So as you can see the old motions running still nice and smooth without any interruption. The profile on the relay board also runs uh, smooth and you, you can see down there the CPU doesn't uh, indicate any error which means that the network itself reconfigured back to the original uh, ring topology so this is now closed rings and everything runs smooth and nice. Also another quick look in the topology view so when I'm plugging back that uh, the cable into relay board you will see that the both units now both devices indicating that the ring again closed and the whole thing is reconfigured back to the closed loop functionality. I set up a trace to capture the SMD23 motor position as you can see. So the reason is I want to show you the effect of the time needed for the configuration changeover. So I'm gonna zoom this section right here and measure the update time. If you remember we set uh, for all of devices the update time is about 128 milliseconds. So you can see update time for this particular uh, position is 128 milliseconds and now over here you can see the gap so when that's when the uh, ring changing its topology so it's in this particular case it's 257 so we can say two two cycles is, so we miss one the update so that's the reason we have to set those uh, update time 228 milliseconds and uh, watchdog for the three cycles. Obviously that's uh, more than enough. In this case we have that 257 milliseconds which means with this within this uh, 257 uh, milliseconds we have those 200 milliseconds of the of the uh, changeover. I also captured some of the traffic uh, from the ring. So what I did I simply uh, mirrored one of the ring ports from the uh, Scalan switch. So in this case I mirrored port 2 to one un of unused ports, port 7, and then I used the Wireshark to capture the traffic. And what I have here, uh, first of all I mi uh, filtered out all of the uh, packets just that belong to the media redundancy protocol. Also, I am capturing both the from the from the port to both ingress and egress uh, packets, which means both incoming and outcoming uh, packets. Now we can see over here we have that uh, MAC address uh, 0, 9 and 10 are those related to the uh, port uh, one and port two from the scan switch. And also we can say over here, as I said in the first part, that the special dedicated MAC ID to those uh, test frames are 001. Now what we can see over here, we have that uh, incoming from port 1, we have that uh, test frame, and then we can track down that every 20 milliseconds we are getting a test frame from port 1. Also same time we have from port 2 also test frames they are sending uh, for 2 and then see every 20 milliseconds. So this is the mechanism how that the uh, ring manager keeps uh, testing the ring integrity. Now I'm gonna scroll down to the moment uh, when the ring is broken. So the moment when I am disconnecting that cable from the one of the, the devices. So what we have here. First of all we have here in this moment uh, missing the uh, test frame coming from port 1 obviously. And then oh, at the same time that the affected the AMCI device recognizing also that ring is broken and sending those uh, link down frames so you can see and also as you said usually by default it said four so there we have a four of them that uh, device sent back to the master informing that the link is down and then also 
master or manager also figure out on its own that after three consecutive times didn't receive that the test frame from the port one there's ring is broken so the next step is the action to change the topology so now over here you see in this moment the uh, ring port 2 because now we cannot see what's going on on the ring port 1 because the the, uh, the link is broken the ring port 2 sending those topology change frames and we can see over here the first one as I said usually it's uh, set to 3 so first one announcing over here you see that we have a 20 milliseconds in the topology change then after 10 milliseconds another one announcing that's gonna be another 10 milliseconds and after third one we we have that zero it means like we can say it's time up time is up so by now all uh, devices in network must be reconfigured all itself and be ready for the new topology to continue to work just one note as you can see even though that link is broken and then the manager also figured out that the link is broken we can see those test frames still coming out of the uh, ring port 2 this is uh, i would say a side effect of the of the uh, fact that we are mirroring port 2 so we are mirroring port 2 and that port 2 still keeps sending those uh, those test frames even though in the reality it they shouldn't be there because there's no reason to send them because the it's already ring is broken so nothing to test so that's that's the reason we still seeing that so this is uh, just a quick capture of those frames and you so you can see the the mechanism how it works how it, the broken leak is detected and how it's reconfigured thank you for watching this tutorial should you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact us we will be more than happy to help you out